Hey guys, today we're going over the differences between Ultim 1010 and Ultim 9085. They're both Ultim, they're both PEI, but what's the difference, what does that mean, and what should you choose for your product? I have a favorite, but what is popular changes from time to time and what is needed. They both are very great at very specific things. In a lot of aspects, they're very similar. In a lot of aspects, one greatly outshines the other. We get a lot of requests for Ulta 9085 because it's got the aerospace certification, the FAA certifications. Uh, it's been tested and tried for years and years and years, so they've put this material through the loops and it's certified for use on aircraft. The UL94 V0 FST rating, that's flame smoke toxicity. If this thing burns, it's gonna self-extinguish, it's not gonna off-gas a ton of the harsh fumes, and it's really just not gonna burn very well. So if you've got this in an airplane and it catches on fire, it's, it's not gonna kill everybody in the airplane just by off-gassing a little bit. It's safer. For a plastic, it's very yeah. safe. And it's tested safe. Ultim 1010 may be very similar, but it hasn't been through all the rigorous testing and certifications as an Ultim 9085. That being said, Ultim 1010 is a little bit cheaper. So if you're making parts, you know, for, for your car, if you're making, you know, small parts in the back, or maybe you just want to save cost and make really strong parts, Ultim 1010 might be a better choice. In Physical. general, it's stronger too. In general? in certain ways, but yeah. And it looks awesome. Right, it's gold, yeah. it's like honey, come on. O overall, it is This is pretty too, it's like stronger. silk. Oh dude, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's a pearlescent, yeah. natural. Let's go right down the list of physical properties. Uh, right up at the top, we have density. So, Ultim 1010 comes in at about 1.27 grams per cubic centimeter, whereas 9085 is 1.34 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, cubic centimeter. <laughs> so does that mean you're actually gonna, no, you're gonna get more? I'm t uh, on a spool. You get more Ultim 1010 on a spool. On a one and kg your part spool. will be lighter. Yep. By minuscule amounts. <laughs> minuscule but if amounts. It's going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Moving on into uh, temperatures and heat. We've got the glass transition temperature of 1010 is about 217 Celsius. That's hot. That's really hot. It's actually the highest. Uh, almost the highest, second highest of mm -hmm. all the plastics we have right now uh, in January 2020. Um, whereas Ultra 985 is only 156 degrees Celsius. So it's much, much lower. However, there's an upside to that. There's a huge upside to that. Working with it daily, it's just, it, the material is much easier to print. It behaves better. Yeah. yeah. Less warping, less curling, better layer adhesion. Overall, it's a much easier material to work with. Don't let that steer you away from this. These, those issues can very much be addressed, but it requires much more tuning, where this is in the high temp materials, we'll call it more of the PLA or PETG. That's a terrible analogy, but usually if you have a profile that's pretty close, your part will come out fine. 1010, you're gonna need to change speeds and temperatures for depending how small the layers are, which is normal, but you really have to tune it in. Heat deflection temperature, it's a little bit lower at 207 on 1010 and 153 on Ultra 9085. So far, every 1010's won all those, in my opinion. Yeah, it pretty much did. Yeah, it's lighter, it goes up to higher temperatures. No, uh, heat deflection, yeah, yeah, I guess it's, no, 9085 is easier to print. Thus far, what we've covered, it is stronger, easier better overall, yeah. easier to print, makes your life more simple, but there's more yeah. that will separate right. them even further. If you're, if you're printing on something like the Funmat HT, where chamber only goes up to 90 Celsius, you're not reaching that 180, 200 Celsius range, then 1010 is way harder to print. You might as well, you might want to stick with 9085. Especially as you get taller. Moving on into mechanical properties, we've got tensile strength, Young's modulus, elongation at break, bending strength, bending modulus, impact strength. 1010 comes in and wins at 90 megapascals. Uh, it's whereas, more rigid. Right, it's much more rigid, whereas 9085 is 86 megapascals. So they're, they're very close, uh, but 1010 is a little bit stiffer. Um, for the Young's Modulus, we're Ooh, boy. In, yeah. That was close. They were four, me four megapascals off before. That's it. Down here, 1010, 3,427, as compared to with the 9085, 2,230. That's, let's just call it 3,400. This, 2,200. Right. So like a 1,000. So the Young's modulus is a measure of the ability of a material to withstand changes in length. 
when under lengthwise tension or compression. You're so, yanking it. Right. Sometimes referred to as uh, the modulus of elasticity. Uh, the Young's modulus is equal to the longitudinal, longitudinal stress divided by the strain. So basically, 1010 wins once again. It's overall stronger by a significant amount, about a third more, more than a third. If you tried um, to pull the bench you apart. Yeah. From the, that's that's yeah. your mod, Young's modulus. This is gonna take a lot more to yank them into two halves than 9085. Right. Uh, down to elongation at break, uh, 1010 comes in at 3.3%, whereas 9085 comes in at 4.5%, which means 9085 is actually tougher. Uh, it will elongate a little bit more before it breaks. It'll give before it fails, right. whereas this will just kind of more quickly, ca catastrophically fail when pulled apart. Just bang, bang, as opposed to creak, creak, bang. Right. Uh, and that brings us into the impact strength, where 1010 is 32 joules per meter, uh, so it's more sensitive an impact than the 115 joules per meter. Cool, 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 cool. The table. Oh, the table. We'll probably. do this later in okay. slow motion. You Fire. promised I could do this. Fire. We will. All right. We will. Impact strength, 9085 is way more impact resistant. Almost four times as impact resistance as Ultim 1010. There's the big, there's, that's one of the big ones there that make it. Right. Now, Ultim 1010 does have the NSF 51 certification as well as the UP, USP class six ISO 10993 and FST ratings, uh, meaning it can be implanted in the body. So that's something that we don't see on the 9085. You see, Ultim 1010 used in medical situations. It's food safe too, right? It is food safe. So you know how they're getting rid of plastic straws? Yeah. You just need to buy a high temp 3D printer and print your own straws for your, your, own for straws. your restaurant, will, anything. It'll last Twisty forever. Twisty straw even. You can sell it, you can put your logo on it. Can we make Whatever. One? Yeah, we should. <laughs> Twisty straw, oh my God. Uh, I think we tried that. I think we did try it. <laughs> we did. <laughs> I wonder what happened to that. In conclusion, if you're starting to print Ultim and you're like, which Ultim should I use? Should I get this PEI off of Alibaba? That stuff's probably not real. It's gonna be mixed like 40% something else. Uh, so don't Spend don't the money it. on the pure stuff that you know you can trust. Yeah, we've seen some low temp Ultim and uh, it's not really Ultim. It prints at way lower temperatures. Just Additives. avoid that like the plague. But if you're starting out, 9085 is going to be the way to go. It's going to be more forgiving in your printing. It's a tiny bit more expensive, but the amount you'll save in failed prints and just overall uh, in your own, you know, your own brain and sanity, uh, it will be a lot better option. Double check to make sure 9085 fits your chemical resistances. Uh, the temperatures you need and the strengths you need for that part, give it a couple tests and you should be good to go. Uh, now if it's not, or if it doesn't have, maybe it doesn't have the right chemical resistance, uh, then 1010 is another great option. Just a little bit harder to print and it does come in a carbon fiber blend, which actually makes it much easier to print. Yeah. So that's really good. Uh, if you're wondering where we got this information, there should be some links down below this video somewhere, uh, but it is a conglomeration from around the web. We found most sites uh, don't quite exactly match up in the manufacturer versus the extruder versus this, this make it from website versus you know uh, MATLAB. They're all kind of varying. So we just did our best to put it all together and give you guys a presentation of most of the information here. We hope it helped. If you have any specific questions or if you want to know where do I buy these filaments, well, that's easy. Where do you buy these filaments? Well, Visionminer.com is right. where I trust them. That's from. right. We sell what we use. We use these machines every day and the filaments, and we're here to help you do it too. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next video.